Oh, this is already on. Top of the morning, yeah. It's a beautiful blue day here. And uh, <clears throat> the work on the cab continues. Today I'm going to take out the seats. I'm in progress of trying to rip the headliner out. Uh, I'm the kind of guy who wants to take things out in a hole, in a hole, so that I can replace it back. But I think this one's going to come out uh, with a little bit of damage. So I think our plan is to replace it with uh, something a bit more sturdy and something that we can. Uh, take out and replace uh, without uh, having to damage those plastic poppers so um, I think I'll take out the seat first maybe maybe that's a good idea I don't know things progress a little bit organically here you know on a whim ta -da. anyway let's see what happens this old ceiling from 1987 is quite manky it's just a hard board with some foam and some cover on it. The foam is actually disintegrating. Ugh, yucky. It's fastened with uh, these plastic poppers and clips. Some of the poppers survived, some of them didn't. I think we need something better than this. Hello. Hello. This isn't very comfortable. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to start working on the ceiling. Uh, actually, we're not going to be working on the ceiling. We're going to start fixing the ceiling. Well, finish fixing the ceiling. Well, yeah. So Because I've already put that stuff on it. Yeah, so we have uh, island out. Yeah, silent code. That's the one. Not dynamite uh, on here already, so yeah. it's a little bit it's a little bit good, but it could be gooder. Better speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to do this? <laughs> You're allowed to do whatever you want, darling. Yes, dear. <laughs> so the plan is that we will fill these cavities yeah. that are in the depth here with uh, dodo mat? Yeah. Not dodo juice. No, dodo juice is a better com <laughs> company. It's uh, a different company. Okay, gooder company. Um, <laughs> so, so there's no, so we're going to put foam there. Foam would stick it back. Uh, but the original liner has got two levels there is more foam over the driver's head and less foam around the turret hole the the, the sunroof uh, so we're gonna try to simplify this a little bit and we're gonna use one piece of plywood that will be at the level of this piece here yep. which is up there whereas the original one went to here on the inside of this lip which I hope you can see but we're gonna extend it beyond that lip and the primary reason for that is that as you might be able to see over there there are clips that hold the 
uh, the, headliner. the headboard headliner in place and I don't want that I want to use uh, fasteners that I can remove and reattach without a problem in other words riv nuts mm -hmm. what a surprise not sponsored <laughs> sadly no uh, so we're going to put a riv nut in each corner and that's going to be the main fasteners for that end of the headliner we will probably have to reinforce the head liner board uh, a little bit so that it doesn't sag but it also gives us the opportunity to attach the headboard with riv nuts all over here and then obviously uh, we'll do the same here in this corner and that corner and hopefully we will get it uh, in there in a nice way that allows us to remove it whenever we need to. For example, adding electronic gadgetry up in there, like a, maybe a reversing camera or not the camera, but the display uh, and uh, other Stop. nice things like extra lights, maybe speakers at what, someday or something like that. So that's the plan. And yeah, so silent coat, dodo mat, piece of plywood that's a bit bigger than the original one and then we will coat we will cover that one in uh, uh, black vinyl just like the doors the hatch will probably be a little bit more difficult because it's got these handles here and they need to be turnable with your handables uh, and again it was it was using these clips and we don't like those clips so we will probably end up having the plywood attached to this part with riv nuts so that's the idea have i covered everything i think so mm. we started by tearing off the old foam and cover from the original ceiling then we used them as template we marked all the holes and everything else that we could just in case. Then we started cutting out the basic shape. We used the track saw, the table saw and the jigsaw to uh, get everything right. Once we had the basic shape, we glued the two pieces together. You know, I was bricking it here, but uh, it turned out well. Hello, good morning. I stuck some rubber mats on the ceiling. It's something called a dodo super liner or something. It's meant to be kind of sound deadening and insulation as well. It's all good. Yeah. So now we're going to try to fit the headliner for the first time. We uh, made a rough cut yesterday. Yep. So uh, it's approximately the correct size. Mm -hmm. It's probably a bit oversized. But we want to now see if it a, fits around the turret hole and the, uh, if it actually fits in here at all. Yeah. So let's uh, see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Turns out the plywood was a little bit too big, so we needed to trim off a little bit of fat on there. Track saw to the rescue, no problem. We also needed to make some recesses for the sun visors and the passenger side ceiling handle. The drill and the jigsaw made short work of this. And naturally I had to use the sander a little bit, just to make it a little bit pretty.
When you install rib nuts, you have to be careful to tighten them enough so that they don't spin, but not too much so that you strip the threads out. If you strip the threads out, you can probably rescue it by drilling out the rib nut because it's not spinning. If your rib nut is spinning on the other hand, well, you might want to get some new fresh curse words because you really might need them. The headliner is now at a state where it fits and uh, we have uh, four mounting holes for it so that we can actually put it into the ceiling. It is still droopy and it needs more rib nuts and fasteners. The next step will henceforth be to stiffen it up and to position a few more rib nuts into the uh, ceiling of the vehicle and then the appropriate holes and spacers here. Uh, because of the way we've made the uh, the headliner, uh, it is now sitting a little bit lower than the original one. It's a little bit bigger. There's a recess in the ceiling. With the rib nuts attached to the ceiling, we need to build it up to 28 millimeters so that we have a, a sturdy fasting system thingy. The reinforcing principle is quite simple. Just add more wood where it's needed. I use a table saw to cut some strips and then I just make them fit wherever I think the reinforcements are needed and I glue them down. I added quite a lot more reinforcements but there's no point in showing all of it. This is the headboard as it is, as it stands right now. We're putting reinforcements reinforcements in down at the bottom there, uh, or around the turret. We have the ones at the driver's side of, above the driver's head. However, it's taken a long time to get the glue to dry and all that stuff. So we're, we're simply just gonna pack up and call it a night. Sun's gonna set in a few minutes. The headliner has got four holes with four corresponding rib nuts and bolts in the ceiling. They're at each corner, so that's not going to be strong enough to hold the headliner up in the way that I want. Because I want it to be strong enough to put stuff into. So, right here, we have one rib nut, we have another one here, and then there's another one here. And we're going to try with these three first <laughs> but where do we need to drill the holes in the headline well to figure that out I have taken a bolt like uh, that and this bolt I ground to a sharp end and I put two nuts and a washer on it the washer's job is to Make sure that I could put a socket on it, it doesn't fall too far. So I'm just gonna uh, put this into here. And I'll put it roughly at the height of the of the what's it called? The where the headliner is gonna be. There's another one here. That is roughly that height there. And then the final one is up. Here you go. Now, to aid the location of these, I'm also going to soil them with some black ink. 
that way hopefully some of the black ink is going to rub onto the the panel that we're pushing up to here um, So we pushed the uh, headliner into the ceiling and here is now a mark. It's quite prominent. Uh, there's another mark and we have another one there too. So now I, I, I know these ones are, are alright. I'm going to drill them out and I'm going to drill that one out. Drill it to drill, drill. We just test fitted the uh, headliner headboard for the umpteenth time and I think that's about the, the last uh, time we need to test it for mechanical fitment. We have two extra holes here on the above the passenger side. This is where the passenger side handle goes. These are the two cutouts there. They're strengthening there. And the holes are there with some bit spacers. Then we have holes in the corners. Um, then we have one in front of the hatch and then one in the center and then this is where the other handle goes in the roof and then there's one at the rear and this is above the driver and there's two holes there it's all strengthened but the idea here is that this bit here is now there's three thin pieces of plywood here that means that we can uh, mount stuff into there when whenever we want to all right, so now I think the uh, next step is to put the vinyl on it. This can be a little bit of a nerve-wracking situation because the contact adhesive bites immediately. You can put sticks on uh, between the vinyl and the plywood and then you can pull them out when you've positioned everything all right. But uh, the way we did it worked just fine and we have no creases. So we got lucky and we're very pleased with it. Every edge needs gluing and folding over. You need to make them crease free and as tight as possible. Sometimes you have to come back and do it the next day. So that's what I did. It's uh, easier to do when most of the glue is dry so you don't have to worry about uh, pulling things off by mistake.
using a little bit of super glue can act as a very quick uh, glue clamp. We really like this foam. The sticky back is really sticky and you can shape it uh, into any shape you want. And uh, it really makes a difference. Kaz has already applied it to the ceiling of the mug. It looks like the headliner and hatch liner, I'm sure that's a word, is done, ready for installation. And uh, yeah, it looks a little bit of a hodgepodge from this side, but uh, I think the gist of it is plenty of insulation and noise dampening qualities, and it is sturdy and it'll be ready for future shenanigans in the form of gadgets and stuff. It's also worth mentioning that there's a whole load of this on the roof of the mog as well. In the ceiling, yeah. Yeah. So this is complementary to that, supposed to sandwich it together. Which is why you might be able to see it's a bit uneven, yeah. uh, because there's loads on that side already. Yeah. Okay. The version 1.2 maybe of the headliner is about to go in. Version 1.2 includes new interior lights. Three of them operated by a switch. Before we install the roof liner, I just want to show the back of it. There's a little bit of a junction there and the connectors to the lights. There's the switch and the, the lights are basically just going in these the grooves in the of the cables are just going in the grooves of the foam. So in there is a cable and one that's going over there follows this line there and goes like or make some other type of noise. Yeah. And that's a, a, a gap there. Uh, there to uh, allow for the cable for the reversing camera to go out into the front or downside of it. So. chuffed really quite a lot. The cab is all buttoned up. Today we've um, got the headliner back in, but in order for us to get the headliner in, we decided we wanted to mount some interior lights. So we bought three little 24 volt um, LED strip lights, which we mounted into the ceiling. And the wiring for that is a story for another day. And we have also got the uh, camera mounted, well, sorry, the camera screen mounted. So I'm just going to show you what we've done. 
So, that's one of the lights. And that's the other lights. And we've now got the uh, lights wired in so they come on and off with the door. And unfortunately, the door's open so I can't show you, but we can show you off and permanent on. And in the back position is switched with the door. And we've also got uh, the reversing camera screen wired in. Really, really, really pleased. We think it looks really, really, really cool, actually. So, there you go. All buttoned up, all wired in. Hi guys, apologies for the echo, but this is the brightest room that I have available to me here where I'm sitting and editing. As you can see in the video, this was filmed many months ago and it's about to be released now. So I thought that I'd give you a little bit of an update. As you have been watching the ceiling episode, the next one will be the hatch. I couldn't fit them in and I want to show part of how tedious all of this is. I think it's important to not skip over everything, bish bosh bang and uh, it's all done. I know it can be a bit boring sometimes and I'm trying to figure out a good way of skipping past the boring bits as quick as possible. However, I also wanted to say that at the moment I have more than five viable episodes in the can. I am hoping to release between two to three videos a month. I have um, not by choice been um, given more time, less money, but more time, but okay. Uh, which brings me to another uh, point. Uh, if you want to support these videos, you can do. Check the links in the descriptions of ways to do it. Uh, these uh, cameras and hard disks and stuff like that are not very cheap, so uh, I, I want to keep doing this and uh, every little helps. We've also got uh, useful links in the description for the equipment that we've used and all that stuff. If this is the first video you've seen, please go back and check the previous ones and subscribe because there's a lot more to come. Obviously, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, tell me why. And also, Share it if you have friends who might benefit from this uh, sort of lark. And if you have a question, obviously drop me a comment. Finally, it was about a year ago since I reached a thousand subscribers on the channel. Since then we've worked quite hard on getting more content and doing video editing and I want to do more. As I am recording this, we are just a smidge under 2,000 subscribers, so I'd like to thank all of you who have subscribed and I'd like to welcome any new subscribers. The Unimog currently is at a stage where we want to start building the actual habitat, the box, the camper. Please, stick around, I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you.